Sonic the Hedgehog is a genuinely charming, wholly entertaining, and surprisingly decent movie for everyone to enjoy, with a whirlwind of consistently abysmal video game adaptations overburdening the landscape of cinema to this very day, potentially spoiling the notion of ever witnessing a noteworthy variation of these beloved properties in the near future, sometimes a charming, entertaining, and decent motion picture about a lonesome little hedgehog is all it takes to show the masses that there can be gold mined from these video games when they are finally tailored to the big screens. While there have been a handful of films before it that have soared with admirers, such as Mortal Kombat and Warcraft, to name a couple, most seem to be content in simply being serviceable, which really is a shame. Video games are situated out there and movie studios are chomping at the bit to revise them for cinemas. Where these retellings fail is in not staying faithful to the source material. There have been talks of a Metal Gear Solid motion picture hitting the market now for quite some time, and it only makes sense. Series creator Hideo Kojima has cited Die Hard and Predator among the laundry list of key inspirations for the video game series. Both films are very similar in terms of structure, having even been made by the same director, John McTiernan. Unraveling how an adaptation of Metal Gear Solid could work well lies within these movies of the past that have inspired its inception. What needs to be done in regards to penning a good script is to give the source material a playthrough, or seek out a speed run with the cutscenes intact. Structure-wise, it would make sense to adapt Metal Gear Solid just as it is. Almost. Where the magic trick comes into play is knowing when to switch to these non-playable characters that audiences do not see during gameplay. Why does Otacon love Sniper Wolf? How does Liquid Snake plan on progressing with his sinister plot? While the video game overindulges in exposition to answer these pair of questions, a film could really shine brightly in showing rather than telling. Looking back to Sonic, the film handles these non-playable character sequences in a very simple way, which is ferociously commendable. For instance, dishing out information about Jim Carrey's Dr. Robotnik gradually, such as his obsession with drones and being orphaned, bullied as a child, makes Robotnik an even more fleshed out antagonist than his video game counterpart. Whereas something like Metal Gear, the pieces are already on the board. They just need to be put in place. So, in essence, it should be easier to write a film version of a video game character who has already been developed within the source material. If Robotnik appeared in the Sonic movie exactly as he was depicted in the video game series, it would be a fairly boring endeavor. Going forward with these inevitable video game adaptations is the question of which ones are worthy of adaptation? There has been a craving for more female representation in action cinema, hence why a Metroid Prime film should be hugely considered. Audiences have been without a well-received disaster movie for quite a while, so an adaptation of the cult classic survival game, Disaster Report, would be a worthy gamble. Jurassic World has rejuvenated interest in the dinosaur movie. Dino Crisis provides the chance for a new take on the genre. Amidst this global pandemic, what better time than now to ignite a siphon filter adaptation? The options are nearly endless, and the first truly definitive video game adaptation is still waiting to be unearthed. Sonic is now the peak to surpass.